Greetings everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Today, we're going to finish our run to the third dungeon. But first, let's do a little kinstone fusing. Hey, Brocco, what's happening? I'm glad that our kinstone pieces fit perfectly. I wonder what it could be. Alright, so this guy's going to spawn another golden chest. That's probably going to be money. Lots of money. Some people were worried about me having no money in this game. Don't worry, there's tons of money to be had. If ever you're running out of money, kinstone with somebody! Or play the chicken game. As I demonstrated earlier, the chicken game is a great way to rack up money. Alright, so she gives us another golden chest in the Minish Woods. We'll check that out next time we're over there. And, uh, let's do one more with this old lady. Why not? I'm glad we were careful about it, Dottie. I think it's kind of interesting that in this game they decided to give some of the NPCs names, so as you kinstone fuse with them, you can see. Alright, so she spawned a golden enemy. Basically, they're just really strong versions of regular enemies. They move faster, and they take a lot more hits to kill. And guess what happens when you kill them? You get money! Yes, like I said. No reason to not have money. This guy sells Picolites. Basically, what it is is something that you can drink or whatever, and it helps you... It, it increases the drop rate of certain items different things. We'll probably use some of those later. I'll show them off. Alright, this guy's gonna teach us something new! Sure, why not? Why would I not accept new training? Are you crazy, Mr. Swiftblade? Alright, so the Rock Breaker is the technique he's gonna be teaching us. It's really simple. All it does is allow us to break pots, rocks, and especially signs with our sword which in other games was pretty much just something that came automatically with a sword upgrade. This time you have to learn it. The only swift blade technique that I think is required of the game is the spin attack. Um, any of these other extra ones that we learn are optional. And I'm going to learn them all, though. This pot breaker one is very handy, by the way, because I hate having to switch and lift things. Although this game did improve upon the lifting mechanism by making it one of your buttons instead of having to switch to a item to actually do it. So kudos to you there. Um, oh, I don't have one. Whatever. I'll try with you later. She had a green one anyway. Green ones, like I said earlier, they don't give you that great of stuff. This is the red ones that really give you good stuff. Anyway, we're going to head back to the swamp, which we were earlier. I didn't push the shortcut rock, so I have to take the long way again. Whatever, it's okay. It's not that long, because I'm already here. Alright, remember when the poet guy sent us off to find his kinstone piece in the lobby of the hotel? Well, here he is. We've got our piece. There we go. Wow, I had a bunch of them already like that. Too bad the dialogue for Kinstone Fusing with him didn't show up until I grabbed the one in the hotel, or I could have just skipped it. Oh well, he opens up a path down in the western woods, which is where we are, by the way. Alright, I want you to pay attention to something. Notice that he is in the building. He is in the treehouse, okay? We've left the treehouse. He's still in the treehouse. Alright, I'm going to take the shortest route to his home. And I just want to show you something. Watch out for all the enemies here, by the way. Alright, so, I've taken the shortest route, the most direct route, down here. And guess what? The son of a bitch beat us. What the hell? Alright, so, yeah, there's somebody in his house, and he's too shy to scare him out. Personally, I think, if you're too shy to chase out a trespasser, you don't deserve to own your own property, but that's just me. This emo person in here likes to be in the dark because it settles the soul. Well, the only way to fix that is to light it up, but we don't have an item to light things yet, so we can't do it. I guess we'll just go to the swamp. The saga of the Poet Laureates will have to be postponed until another time. Fucking crows everywhere. Alright, so now that we are... In possession of the Pegasus Boots, we can traverse the Caster Wilds. Basically what it allows you to do is run on top of the water. Pretty nifty, if you ask me. The only thing I don't like about the Pegasus Boots in this game is... When Rick runs, he doesn't hold his sword out in front of him. So if you run into enemies, you will take damage. 
And that's not fun. Uh, I can't do anything over there right now. So this theme has a throwback to the original Zelda theme in it, which is pretty cool. Alright, there's gotta be something nifty down here. I mean, come on, it's ruins. There's always something good in ruins, especially when they're buried under swamps. Look at that. Oh. Alright, so we have to fight an Iron Knuckle. Normally you can fight them by waiting for them to open up and then you hit them with a sword, but that doesn't happen too often. Not often enough for me, so I'm going to fight him with bombs! Hitting with bombs actually does more damage than your sword. Or at least your sword at its current state. So, it's actually to your best interest to fight him. And plus, he can't block the bombs. There we go. That was pretty simple. Made it much easier than it was normally. And we get a cold! A gold kinstone piece! I don't know why I said cold there for a second. It probably is pretty cold. It's been hanging out down here. Anyway... The game uses gold kinstone pieces for plot-specific ones. They don't actually get you items or anything like that. They do drive the plot, though. Or they get you something super special. Now, um, if you go south and west in the swamp, you're going to encounter three statues, and they're each going to want to fuse with you a gold kinstone piece. So that's where you find out that you need three. I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to tell you that I need three. Also, I can't do anything about this statue right here. Hmm, it has an eye. I wonder what I need to do with it. Those of you who have played previous Zelda games know exactly what's up with that. And exactly what item we need to deal with it. Well, it's got to be hiding around the swamp here somewhere. I mean, come on. The one thing about Minish Cap is there aren't that many dungeons in this game. There's six dungeons. Five of which actually give you items. Four of which give you the elemental pieces. Um, which means that there's not a lot of opportunities for pickups. So they throw a lot of the special pickups out on the overworld. Like the Pegasus boots that we got earlier and the bow and arrow set that we're about to get down here. We have to kill these things first. Basically, like in all previous uh, 2D handheld Zelda games, red enemies are weaker than blue enemies. And we got a bow! I love the bow! It's one of my favorite weapons. Let's switch to it right now. Alright, so, I was pissed in the Oracle series when they took my bow away, because I think that the seed shooter and the, what's it, the slingshots, not a good substitute for the bow. Nothing beats having a bow. Also, if you rapidly hit the button that you have the gust jar on, it does that kind of rapid-fire thing. It's pretty handy for sailing along. If you're into that kind of thing. Alright, so we start out with 30, 30 arrows already, which is pretty nice. I like that, but I think we can improve on that. Although we're not going to be able to improve on that just yet. Let's take care of this statue, though. Alright, so one hit in the eye will wake it up, and then it takes three hits to actually kill it, once you've woken it up. Now, a cool feature that they added to the bow in this game is, you can actually draw the bow, and keep it drawn, and not actually fire until you're ready. So, if you hold the button down, he'll do that. And then when you let go, he'll fire the arrow. The only drawback is that you can't change direction, but that's a small price to pay for a pretty cool feature, if you ask me. Also, the bow is a pretty effective way of killing the pea hats. Fuck you. Hell yeah. One hit'll kill him. Alright, so we have collected two of the golden kinstone pieces. We only need one more. That's actually south and east here in the Caster Wilds. This place is kind of like a maze. Um, but, you know, as long as you go around to all the different places, you'll you kind of figure out where you gotta go. Although, the first time I did this area, I got lost, I gotta admit. This is one of the areas that a lot of new players will get lost in. And the snake still takes two hits with a bow. Huh, kills P-Hats in one hit, snakes, two. Doesn't make sense. Alright, so we'll have to use Ezlo to get over here because we can't swim yet, unfortunately. For some reason, Rick has no ability to swim until he gets a special item. Yeah, 
changing directions would have been mighty helpful there, but whatever. Alright, I missed something that's over there to the west, but I'll show it off in a little bit, so don't worry. It's something special, something handy. Alright, so pushing that rock is gonna pretty much open up a shortcut later, so we don't have to do this whole maze again if we ever came back. But this is gonna negate that even further. We're gonna open up this here thing. And you know what? Every single time that happens, all the way up until the last one, it's going to rattle as low. And I thought I hit that guy three times for, for some reason. Yes, Ezlo is amazed by that wind statue every single time. It amazes me how much he is amazed. Oh, I see a little Minish door there. Did I say Minish? Wow, what the fuck? Minish! There's a little Minish door there, but we can't swim yet, so we'll have to come back. I have a feeling we're coming back to this swamp. Alright, and that is the final gold kinstone piece! Excellent. We can move on. Alright, so coming down here is actually where you find the statues, as I mentioned earlier. They want a fuse. Alright, what they do is break up this rock here that's blocking the way. And you have to fuse with all three of them to be able to progress. Otherwise, you're stuck in the swamp with nowhere to go. Thanks, buddy. Alright, one more and we'll get this over with. Some really funky shaped piece. Alright, we'll be using uh, gold kinstone pieces later on, too. To fuse with more statues, by the way. Alright, so before we go over there, I'm going to show off that thing that I mentioned earlier that I promised I would. It's over here. There's a grave. Hmm. I wonder what's down here. Oh, it's a Swift Blade guy. Swift Blade the first, and he's a ghost. Uh, oh, come on. Alright, so this guy actually teaches you the final technique, but you can only learn it after you've learned all the other seven techniques. So we'll be coming back to this guy, but that doesn't mean that we can't take his piece of hearts. I like to think that I stole that guy's life away. I was just hanging out there. Oh well, anyway, done with the swamp, and now we're in the Wind Ruins. This is the lead up to the third dungeon. Uh, I was trying to see if they have bomb arrows in this game, but unfortunately they do not. What a shame. I'll take this blue kinstone piece, though, so whatever. Alright, this guy is a statue that will attack you. I think they're called living armor or something like that. Someone will probably point out to me what it's called. Anyway, four hits with your sword and it is dead. I love how early in the game you become a tech-tight killer. I hate those things. Alright, so that statue over there is actually not activated, so it won't do anything if you touch it. But this guy's gonna tell you that, hmm, they were built by the Minish, and they have a switch inside. Well, the front of it did kind of look like a ladder. Alright, well, let's jack this guy's kinstone piece and get out of here. Yeah, that does look like a ladder. Well, let's climb up! Oh, well, there we go. Alright, so yes, that will activate the statue. You'll want to know that for later on. There's actually puzzles involved with that. Alright, push this rock uh, over here to ensure that we don't have to fight that thing again every time we come in here. Uh, and we will be coming back here because there's a place later on that's really nice for farming kinstone pieces. And secret seashells. Alright, so there's a few of those kill every enemy on the screen to progress areas over here. We're supposed to be on some kind of... Uh, I guess you call it a step. It's a series of gradually increasing plateaus. Or something of the nature. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of cool. It's supposed to be some kind of a Native American vibe over here. Or, uh, not Native American, like Aztec. Native South American. Anyway, this little cave over here has something special in it. 
Still can't jump yet. I wish we could jump! I want to traverse holes! Come on. Give me the jumping item, game. I know you've got one. Anyway, yes, all that's in here is a piece of heart. We'll complete a piece. Alright, so, back to the tree! Alright, so, now we're going to go all the way around, because as you see, that living armor statue over there is not actually activated. We have to activate him! We have to traverse this path of deadly snakes! Now, this could be made easier by growing up to large Rick and killing off the snakes, but I like to live on the dangerous side! You know how I go. This is getting dangerous. It's getting close. Ah, it wasn't that bad. Anyway, row and progress. Simple as that. Alright, and that's, uh... So the last statue you actually have to kill for now, but, uh... There's actually going to be a part later where we're going to kill some statues to grab some items right over here. See those chests hidden behind the other statues? We'll kill all these guys and it'll open them up. And I'm killing this guy horribly. Holy shit, Rick. What the fuck is wrong with you? I apologize for my language, but I'm just appalled at Rick's performance. There we go. Wow. Maybe I should just throw a bomb at him. All right, so that fourth guy over there runs over to block the way. We're gonna have to do something about that. He actually won't fight you, no matter how hard you try to activate him. But, for killing them all, we have 50 mysterious shells and 50 rupees! How nice! I'll take that any day. Alright, so we're gonna have to shrink back down and shut this guy off. Cause he's just getting in the way. It's pissing me off. Alright, for some reason the grass down here loves to drop rare items. Mysterious seashells and uh, kinstone pieces all over the place. So, later on we want to actually farm that stuff because I'm going to be trying to get all of the figurines. You have to get all the figurines to get all the pieces of hearts, unfortunately. I'm going to be coming over here to farm some seashells and kinstone pieces. Alright, so... That's it. The next dungeon is actually right down there, and I'll leave that for another time. I'll see you guys later.